Tune in, subscribe, and comment. I will contact you via your community or discussions tab as selected. Spam in the chat result in disqualification. All right, we're going to overclock the 30 series. Right now, I'm going to start with a low end GPU, the 3070. I've done 3080, 3080 Ti, and 3060. Um, this is the card I've got, or what I was able to get a hold of. Um, it's, it's, it's a decent card for cooling with the three fans, but um, not a very powerful card. So what I'm going to cover is I'm going to cover profiles, fan curve, and the overclocking. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the website of the manufacturer and download whatever software or updates firmware they have for the card. If it's a brand new card and you just got it. And you can download NVIDIA's driver. You're going to install NVIDIA's driver, get that all done and installed. And I recommend these settings right here. So, let 3D application aside, set the resolution to what your desktop is normally displayed at, and disable G Sync for now. Okay. Install MSI Afterburner if you don't have it, you can get MSI afterburner.com i believe and um it can look different but the same functions are there you can also just change to this if you want to use this one here so what we're going to do is we're first going to set up profile one profile one is going to be default so whatever the manufacturer's clocks are for the card we're just going to run a default this is going to be your desktop 2d applications so no 3d work next is we're going to set up profile three what we're going to do is going to go ahead and we're going to run time spy to get this profile and so basically what i did is i go in i've got time spy on steam and i'm going to launch the 3d mark and i'm going to run just the normal time spy be up in a second here So just regular time spy, you're gonna run that. Okay, so profile one is set up, just stock basic, lock it in. Profile three, we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and not mess with the voltage. That means it's safe. There's nothing I have to worry about. You're gonna raise the power limit and the temp limits all the way up. And go in on the clock core, maybe put start with just a hundred. Um, especially if you don't look up your specs and know what you're working with. Do a hundred. And maybe the memory clock, leave it at zero for now. Okay, lock it in as your profile three. Go into your settings. And here, you're going to want to disable this for now. It's probably not enabled, but if you have it enabled, disable it. Profile, set your 2D profile right here. Stock clock. And then this is my 2D right now, but we'd set it for the 3D. And... The next thing you want to do is once you've got those profiles set up. So basically, if you have profile three set and you have profile one set, profile one is going to be your 2D desktop. For so most case scenarios, if whatever your benchmarking crashes, it will just bring you back to your desktop. You might have to hit escape to tap out of the lockout or something like that, or you might have to reboot. But usually these days, it'll just take you back to the desktop when it crashes, or it'll or it'll just say it crashed. Um, the 3D profile is how we're going to determine what the max overclock is for the card. That will give us an idea of what we want to set the second profile for, for like all gaming profiles and 3D running just constantly at a safe overclock is what we're going to set. And I've already determined this because this takes can take a couple hours to run through the benchmarks. So what I first did is I put it on 100. I actually put this on 300, just a small boost. I ran the benchmark and made it fine. So then I took this and went all the way up to another 100 to 200, leaving this at 300. I ran the benchmark again. Okay, it crashed. So then I dropped it down to 175 and I left the memory at 300 mark and I ran it again, it made it. So then I took the memory and I doubled it from 300 to 600, ran it, it made it. Then I took it and took it up to 1000 and ran it again and it all made it. Now for me, 
we can fine tune this, but I'm not looking for a fine tune max max overclock right now. Like that would be with a card other than a 3050. That would be like the 3090 or 3080 Ti and trying to get on the leaderboards of like 3D Mark or something like that, trying to get a record run. I'm not going to do that. Because the next step I would do is if I was like, this is the 3080 Ti, I would probably take it to 180, keeping this at a thousand run again and see if it crashes. If it doesn't, then I'll go 185 and do five, five uh, point increments. But that's pretty much how I would do it. Another thing is that you see this fan speed is 100%. I'm going to run the fan speed at 100% when I'm doing this. So, but I'm not going to save it like that. What I'm going to do is once I have everything locked in and I've been running the profile, the fans at 100% for the benchmark, this gives me a good idea with maximum cooling, what the car can do. And then I know that when I set my 2D profiles up, that when I put it in the fan curve right here, that this is going to probably make it through anything because it's not going to be able to heat up as much and run as high and as long as it wants because the fan curve is not it's not running 100 right so it's gonna throttle it a little bit and so that means it'll be even safer and then once we've got all this set up we've got these profiles set in and go back into the settings here for profiles and we lock in the second one which I'll explain how I got the second one. So, basic, not overclocked, regular, everything, but with a custom fan curve, which typically when I set the custom fan curve, I'll go a 50, 50 right here, middle line, and then I'll take these down and up from there. This profile is set for the 3080 and 3080 Ti, which were fairly hot, stock out of the box also right here just fan zero fan override so if the card has a fan stop i don't want the fan stop i want the cards to run a tiny bit it, it, i can't hear them they might as well be cooling the card a little bit and um it can be very annoying sometimes to hear the fans just spin up really really high and then spin down and um you can click this and you can also set the fan curve to where the fans will not shut off um so we have got our max clock locked in now. And now we're gonna set up the profile for our standard gaming profile overclocked on the card, which would be a safe overclock. Pretty much it shouldn't have any problems. And typically that's gonna be like, I'm gonna go down to 100 on the core at 75 off from the max clock. And I'm gonna cut the memory in half. And that's gonna be pretty safe right there. Some cards, sometimes the memory, the memory you almost can't overclock it like on some of the higher end cards like the for the one three cards you're lucky to get anything on the clocks so it's kind of pushed already by the factory overclock usually the clock core you can get a hundred sometimes only 50 it depends on the silicone but um for a good rule of thumb with the 30 series this has been pretty standard right here um maybe not on the memory and one of the things i want to cover is when i'm running the max profile with the fans at 100 percent i will run the time spy till it doesn't crash and then i will run superposition to see if it passes that so and i'll run it on extreme 1080p especially for a 3050 and i'll bench this and if it makes it through this benchmark then i will go in and i'll run heaven and the thing about this i'll run on extreme is that this is a lot longer run than the other two benchmarks and um, it gives a chance for the car to really heat up and hit it pretty hard. And um, if it makes these three right here, I'm pretty much good. Now let's say it makes all three of these benchmarks, no problem. I've got everything locked in like I show you. So we've got the profile one locked in, we've got the fan curve set right here profile two i've got the fan curve set same as one and then three out of the hundred percent okay so we've everything set up we go into our settings we've got profile one 2d and profile two is going to be what i'm going to run all my games at in overclocks okay so now what happens is 
let's say I'm playing a game, let's say I'm playing Warzone, and it crashes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into Profile 2, and I'm going to cut the core clock down by maybe 5 points or 10 points, maybe 95. I'm going to run it again, and if it crashes again, then I'm going to go to 90 and run it again. And if it's stable there, my new lock-in for my safe overclock for gaming is going to be 90 and 500. Now, sometimes when you're having, you're trying to figure out your max core clocks with this, you might want to take the memory all the way back to zero and just mess to where you get a safe core clock, then bump the memory back up if you're running into problems with games crashing. One thing I'm going to say is that when you're doing this and running this, if you have antivirus programs um, or if you have the OSD up, do not um have those disabled when you run your your benchmark for your profile three run your profile three benchmark with whatever you're going to have on all the time gaming so if you have the antivirus on get that max profile clock with that on because you're going to want your system to have all the normal operations going while you're gaming with this profile right here and not crash and that's a pretty much it for it um, I was going to say, if you have any problems with installing the program, or if you had another card in, you put it out and put another card in, and nothing's showing up here, what you can do is you can just do a cold start, so reboot, click the power off, click the power back on after about 10 seconds, power it back on, this should lock in, or you can reinstall it until it says the correct item here. And I think that's about it. It's pretty simple, pretty basic. Um, I recommend running something like Time Spy because for the first benchmark, because it's not super long. And it has where it stops and restarts and reloads, and it runs a CPU and two GPU profiles plus the first benchmark. So it gives you a, a various range. Um, typically, if your CPU or the GPU, I mean, I mean, is gonna is gonna crash out, you'll get a lockup on the screen. The screen will go black or it'll say program closed. If you're running the program and you start seeing little artifacting or sparkles, that means your memory's too high. And uh, that's about it.